Today I look a little different. I don't usually wear my glasses, but I'm a little bit short-sighted. Not severe enough to warrant me having to wear glasses most of the day. I'm also lucky enough to be far-sighted at the same time. So I do need reading glasses for extended reading sessions. But more often than not, I'm a little too lazy to do that. But today, I'm coming in front of the camera in front of you guys wearing my glasses. And that's what today's video is about. Now, wait, isn't this an audio review channel? And yes, sometimes I do other tech products that may not be related to audio, but why glasses? Well, these are smart audio glasses, co-branded by Ondays in collaboration with Huawei. It's basically the Huawei Smart Frames, which they launched only for the Japanese market last year. But today, I bought these in Singapore from Ondays. Now, they are a pair of headphones, and they actually do have built-in mice. So these aren't ordinary dumb glasses. They do have tech built in. In fact, the audio that you're listening to right up to this point was recorded through the built-in mic on this pair of spectacles. It's pretty impressive, I must say. I will be switching over to my regular mic setup from this point, but you should already get a very good idea of how this mic makes you sound over a call. Yes, you can use this over Zoom calls as well. So you can be pretty sure you will be heard properly by anyone that you are taking the call with. I use a pair of Aftershocks OpenCom headset at work to take calls, which has excellent voice pickup and it is very sleek and it's very small. In fact, I do have it right here with me. It's actually in my bag almost all the time in this, uh, well, little bulky case. They carry audio to your ears through bone conduction. So this is the bone conduction part right here. Okay, it goes through your temple and it's almost like magic. It doesn't take the regular path of pushing the sound waves through your ear canals, which means to say you are able to hear everything that comes to you without having to remove your headset. Now, that convenience is really understated. It also features a mic mounted on a boom arm Right, so it works this way. Now I love it because it only picks up sound from uh, right around where your mouth is and you won't get it picking up too much of your colleagues' voices. Or if you are working at home, it will pick up less of your bucking dog or your nagging wife. No, huh? No, I wasn't talking about you, come on. Yeah, but the problem with the Aftershock open com is that you have to hook it around the top of your ear. So if you are wearing glasses like I am now, they tend not to work very well. It get in the way or so. So not to mention that they really make you look like a call center operator. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Thank you. So in comes these smart glasses. Now, what are smart glasses? Well, by all definition, for anything to be smart, they need to possess intelligence, right? Or at least simulated intelligence. Now, by any measure, I don't call these glasses smart. They are not. Maybe a little, but not like intelligent. Then again, marketing has to sell these. So yes, they do call them smart, but they won't be able to tell you the time. Even basic things like, you know, what's the time now? It can't do. Oh, it actually just told me the time. I thought the basic things like time, it can't do. Hmm, let's test how smart it is. What is a day about a thousand years from now? It's 11 February 3023 at 10 a.m. This is replied by the smart glasses. So it is maybe a little bit smart, but actually the smarts aren't actually in the glasses. These glasses can invoke the smart assistance in your pet device. And basically it uses the audio bridge to carry the sound from the phone after your smartphone processes it. Granted it's somewhat smart, right? but it is still relying on others to do the heavy lifting. Okay, so very quickly, let me tell you about the features of these smart glasses. The frame is made out of plastic, so they are pretty lightweight. They come in two frame designs. I've got the rectangular one, but they do have a slightly taller and rounder frame. 
each of the design comes in two colors. The one I have is in black. There is a gray one, but only the bottom part of the frame is gray. So at a glance, they both look very similar in color. The black frame will be slightly more discreet. Now the mic and the speakers, they are also mounted in the frame, in the arms here. Now these are TWS headphones, in other words, true wireless stereo. Now what that means is that the left and the right earpieces are not connected via any cable. So although it's one piece, it actually has no cables running in between. There is a wireless stereo bridge that is formed between the left and the right channels. To your phone or any device that is paired to, it shows up as a single stereo device. Now these also act as speaker phones or headsets which you can use on your calls. The ergonomics of the frame works pretty well for me. There aren't any boom arms which make me look connected all the time. The sounds are played from the frame into my ears as opposed to the bone conduction of the Aftershock's open comm. These are using unidirectional large diaphragm drivers which fires the sound into the ears like through this gap right here. Now the arms on the frame, they are actually very sleek. Well, actually sleek for a pair of smart glasses. Let me pull out the, yeah, right here. This is the Razer Anzu. Smart glasses are new. About two years ago, Razer launched this pair of smart glasses. Now on paper, they are pretty well spec. Low latency Bluetooth, and it comes with polarized lenses, which I actually mounted them on. I swapped out the original plastic clear untinted lens, and my intent was to use the Razer Anzu when I'm outdoors, but there are two issues with the Razer Anzu, which made me keep them in the drawer and never really took it out. Now, the first is that the audio was really too soft. The sound was terrible. The quality was about that of an AM radio. It's stereo, yes, but the sound was very thin and highly compressed. No dynamic range at all. In other words, they sound terrible for any form of music. And when you're outdoors, you do need a little bit of volume as these, by design, do not block out any external noises, whether it's active or passive. So you do need to overcome those sounds and noises with more volume. The second problem, was the arms of the Anzu was far too thick. In fact, the moment my colleagues spotted me with the glasses, they knew it was housing some kind of speakers. Not only that, they could hear the speakers. The sound leakage was terrible from the Razer Anzu. And because they were very soft in the first place, I had to max out the volume, which made the problem even worse. Now, if you're in an office taking a call and you sit in an open plan area, you're likely to be disturbing someone who is sitting on your left or your right. Now, Let's get back to the Ondes Huawei Smart Glasses. Now, if you compare, these arms are very, very much smaller than the Razer Anzu. They aren't exactly inconspicuous, but they are a whole lot slimmer, as you can see. Now, when you wear these, they could potentially pass off to someone else as some retro thick rim black rim glasses, and that's a good thing. Now, it won't draw that much attention to itself. Actually, some of the bulk of the arm was actually moved to the rear of the arms right here, which is the part that goes behind your ears. And that's a smart move because that part won't be immediately visible because it, well, is behind the ears. Now, as opposed to the Razer Anzu, the sound quality on the own days Huawei smart glasses is miles ahead. The Razer had very thin and compressed sounds with very, very little dynamic range. The sound from the Huawei is immediately clear that it is much fuller and much richer. Vocals pack a lot more power and the volume is much louder. I don't actually have to max out the volume. I do max out the volume on the Razer Anzu. Now, there is a lot less sound leakage from the Huawei as well. If you do max out the volume, yes, people around you are definitely going to hear the music or the voice coming out of the frame. So it's a good thing that you don't have to max out the volume to hear anything. In fact, right throughout this video, I am actually playing something, right? Uh, and this is the volume that it's going at. So it's actually very, very soft. Let me raise up the volume so you can hear for yourself. The mic is actually very, very close to where I am. So you should be able to hear something. Uh, right now it's a, probably about 15 or 20% volume, just enough to have a feeling of a pipe music sense. Uh, let me just increase it. Mm. 
this is about oh well about 60 percent volume let me just max it out and now this is at 100 percent volume so i'm just going to keep quiet and you can hear the sound leakage from these pair of speakers The mic is about just six inches away from where these headphones are. Okay, maxing out the volume is actually a little bit too loud, all right? So in the case when somebody is sitting next to you, maybe at arm's length, I think at 50% volume, they aren't really going to hear much from you. So unless they are leaning right next to you, and which in my particular case, probably only my wife will be close enough to hear it when, yes, I'm talking about you, all right? I'm recording a video. Yeah, okay, so let me just lower the volume. Um, I will be hearing something and you probably can't hear anything. So there are similarities between the Huawei smart glasses and the Razer Anzu. Both features touch sensitive controls. They are both rated for IPX4, which means they can withstand light splashes of water or rain or your perspiration and sweat if you're working out in these glasses. Now, both of them comes with software which you can use to control certain aspects of the smart glass operations. Now on the Huawei app, you are able to control what the swipes and the double tap does, which includes play and stop, activating smart assistance, skipping tracks, answering and rejecting calls. But beyond that, not much else you can configure. The Razer software has an EQ, but they are only presets, meaning to say you can't actually fine tune it. It is either default or enhanced clarity or improved treble, but really it doesn't matter because none of those EQ settings improve the terrible sound quality of the Razer Anzu anyway. This is probably one of the worst buy. I actually bought them a long time ago. I wanted to review it for this channel, but I couldn't, I just couldn't bear to say how shit these, be, these glasses are. Anyway, one difference in the app when you're trying to map the touch controls is that the Razer has no means of adjusting volumes. Now, the touch area for the Razer is a tiny dot on the frame where near the logo is. Now, it is a true exercise in frustration to get the aim right. Most guys have better luck at the toilet bowl without the wife complaining. No, no I am not talking about you. No, I don't have another wife. Not now, right? Now, the clear advantage of the Huawei smart glasses is that you are able to slide to control volume. And what makes that possible is that the touch sensitive area of the Huawei smart glass is a whole lot bigger. It covers about half of the front of the frame, which means you can actually slide along the surface to skip track front and back, and you can slide on another side to control the volume. Now, given the larger touch sensitive area, it is a whole lot easier to get your aim right, which makes this immediately a lot more usable than the Razer Anzu. Now, there are some other features that makes the Huawei much easier to live with on a daily basis. And by the way, the music is still playing. I don't think you can hear the music. I am hearing it clearly. Right, through the app, you can actually enable smart detection. What happens is that it pauses the music when you take off the glasses, and when you put them on, it starts to play. There's also no physical means to turn them on and off. You simply open them up and they turn on, and you close them, and it switches off. Now, the glass also reduces the voice call volume if the surrounding is quiet, and it further prevents sound leakage when you're taking a call in an office environment. Now, if you're wondering how these glasses charge up, they do include a pair of proprietary charging cables. Let me just bring it to you. Now, these magnetically attached to the ends of the um, frame, the arm here, and the other end, you actually have to connect to a USB-C cable. You will need a USB-C cable, but that should be common nowadays. There is also a button on the cable right here at where the Y split is, and there's a LED dot indicator to show that it's charging. The button is used for pairing purposes. Now, I don't like proprietary cables, but it is a whole lot better than having a port on the frame itself, which will cause the frame to bulk up to accommodate the port and reduce 
reduce the IPX4 uh, uh, rating, right? And speaking of charging, I have not tested it out, but the battery life is slated for about six hours of music playback and four and a half hours for calls. It is probably on par with most of the TWS earpieces, so I say it's pretty standard. You probably want to charge it up midday if you are in calls the whole day. But if you aren't playing music uh, back to back in between calls, I think it will be good for a whole day at work. Now, when I first heard about the Huawei Ondes Collaborated Smart Glasses, I told myself I'll get it for myself to try it out. I like audio stuff, as you guys might already have guessed, and this is wireless. And best of all, we've got Ondes involved. This pair of glasses goes for 398 Singapore dollars. It is not cheap at all. Now, Bose, they make smart glasses too. And the Razer Anzu was a whole lot cheaper. I can't remember how much I paid for them, honestly, but... Uh, this one, even at $50, I really don't want them. But those did not include prescription lenses. This pair from own days comes, the price includes prescription lenses. You can opt for blue light filtering lens or colored lens or even transition lens for more. But it quickly adds up. And at the base price of $398 Singapore dollars, you already can get your eyes tested on the spot and the set ready in 20 minutes. I spent half an hour there because I was learning how to use it. Now, I opted for reading glasses on this pair. My hope is that I'll be able to use these at work. Now, I expect these to allow reading comfortably at a distance of about 16 inches, which is about 40 centimeters away. So reading should be great. Now, looking at the monitor or laptop screen should be improved. And at the same time, I'll be able to discreetly listen to some music or take any calls on these glasses. I like that Huawei has been collaborating with a couple of brand names around the world. This Onde collaboration is genius for smart glasses. They have also collaborated with Leica for their camera lenses before. Another notable collaboration in the past was with Devlet. Now, I've reviewed those smart speakers before, and if you have not already watched that video, you can watch it right here. Those represent the cheapest piece of Devlet in few stack that you can get on the planet. Devlet isn't cheap, but Huawei made it accessible. So I will see you over in that video.